friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be doing some May updates on my plant collection, showing you around what's going on, all the fun and exciting things, and potentially some less fun and exciting things. I feel like I've got a few things that are like not quite ideal. So I'm going to be bringing you around showing you what's going on in my collection. But before I do, I just wanna say if you're new here and you don't know me already, hi, my name is Emma and I make houseplanty content all over the internet. So if you want to follow along with my houseplanty journey, maybe learn some along the way, stick around, watch some more of my videos and subscribe to my channel. If you're not new here, thank you so much for joining again. <laughs> and yeah, let us get into it. I think I'm going to start in the cabinet because there's some very, very, very exciting news with my war piano. Freaking finally. Okay, so I'm not gonna pull it out because it's like physically attached to the back of the cabinet and that's a pain, but can you see back there? It's got a drip of water on it in a minute. Um, but it's got some freaking new growth coming in. Finally, I'm hoping that's a new leaf. It looks like it will be a new leaf, but I'm not too sure. It doesn't, it's not like red or anything. Did the work Vianums come in red? Um, I, I'm, I'm so unsure. I've never had a new leaf on my War Aquanum, so I guess this is all just new to me and super exciting, and I can't wait to watch it grow over the next, like, I guess few weeks or a month or something. So I will definitely be keeping y'all updated with that probably on Instagram because I can show you like more regularly what's going on. So that is like probably one of the most exciting things that I've noticed recently. Like I was so so thrilled when I saw that. We'll see if it actually turns into something but for now it, it's, it's doing something which is better than doing nothing. Of course, my regal leaf is taking up most of the bottom bit of the cabinet, and it is still as stunning as before. It's just, like, oh, such a beautiful, like, main focus in this bottom half, which I love. And my dubia, I think, is continuing to grow super duper well. It's actually nearly at the top of its pole at the minute, which means I probably will need to extend it. But I think it's, like, properly shingling like it's attaching itself to the pole which is super great it means it's working i guess i i've been nervous about it but i think this is the right option so far so hopefully this continues as it is and keeps getting bigger it still doesn't have any of the like classic dubia sort of markings on it the uh, like silver variegation but i guess we'll just have to hope that that comes in time because so far, it's not got any of that in there. I feel like that's the main bits for the bottom. Um, unfortunately, my black velvet has kind of gone into the one in one out policy in its leaves. I think I might need to do a bit of a better job fertilizing it because that would probably help. But my silver dragon at the back there, it's popped out like quite a large leaf. This is like its first big leaf. Its previous leaves were like quite a bit smaller so I am very very excited about that but otherwise it's just pretty chill in here things are growing well and I guess like I feel like nothing really changes dramatically in the spring with the cabinet because it is pretty much artificial light all year round so nothing like really major happens but like it's still exciting to watch things growing going up to the top we have this very full section. I think the only like major change I've made is I took out the like little pond box I had here because I was really, really, really bad at filling it up. And so I decided to switch them out. I should probably put more water in that one. But I put them elsewhere. A lot of them are Hoyas, so I decided to like pot them up in soil because I feel like soil is a better option for me personally with Hoyas. I know other people have really good experiences with Hoyas and Pond, but I just don't think that is right for me in my collection, so it is what it is. I prefer having things like Alocasias in Pond. Let's see if we can brighten up here. There we go. My Reversa is putting out like a spectacular leaf right now. It's like proper big 
compared to the previous ones which is super exciting and my Amidria Medium Silver also just put out another new leaf. It's slightly smaller than the previous one. I think it might be because it's off the top of the pole here so I need to figure something else out. I could just like fill up to the top. I guess this, that's why the lazy poles are so good but I'm really really bad at remembering to keep this one watered. I know that's a me problem and I just need to figure it out but it's just like the lazy poles aren't as easy for me to water. <laughs> So I just don't water them, which is probably bad, but it, it is what it is. I'm getting some like proper good growth on my fern leaf back there as well. Let me see if I can zoom in. Look at that! So it's on like the back of the leaf, which makes it kind of hard to like show you properly. But it's like properly getting little, I don't know, like uh, leaf blades, pads, whatever you want to call them. So I'm super pleased with that. Eventually I could probably put it into my other new one, which I'm extremely excited about, obviously, but I'm just so glad I was able to get this one to prop so easily. Like, I was worried that it wasn't gonna do well and it's actually done so, so well. My Begonia White Ice is also doing like very, very well in here. I think it's super duper happy. Like it just keeps producing really nice growth. I've not even got it staked up, but it looks so happy and healthy and, growing some lovely big beautiful leaves so I am so glad I've been able to keep this one nice one day I guess I'll probably have to take it out of the cabinet because it'll grow too big or I could just like keep pruning it and make it like a big bushy begonia white ice I think that'd be really cool because it's got like multiple growth points at the very least so it is a happy little camper in there and keeping the cabinet looking nice and lush and full. I think my Gloriosum is staying pretty happy actually on top of the cabinet. I moved it here I think last month when I put the like mini Ikea greenhouse in my bedroom. But since then it has popped out a new leaf back there. I mean I think it is pretty decent in size. We won't see properly until it comes out. But I'm hoping it stays quite big. The previous leaves on it aren't huge. I would love for them to get a little bit bigger, but I mean, I still think it looks pretty cool up there. So I'm not mad at it. I've been quite bad about tidying up this section of my plant collection. I just keep putting stuff here more and more and it just like fills up and I never move stuff. I've got extra of those like water beads that I used on the begonia there, which so far, seems co to continue to be quite happy, which is good. I've got like a couple new leaves on, I think this is my Anthurium Silver Blush Forgetii mix. So that's happy. And I think my Monstera Sandaliana is like actually doing really well in here now. Like look at those roots. Like I think it's almost time to put these back into the mother plant because those roots are just fabulous. So it's doing well and I'm hoping that I can get it back in soon. Otherwise things here are quite slow. My Christmas cactus, literally this is the only leaf I've had since I've had it and it is growing more. I do have a tiny, tiny, tiny another one there, but for the most part I'm not actually getting any new growth on it, which I'm not quite sure why. I don't know if it's not in a bright enough spot, but I figured it would probably be. Like, it's not in that dark of a spot either, so. I, I don't know. I'm just gonna leave it be and hope that it puts out more growth soon. Or it might just be a bit of a slow grower for me. But for the most part, I'm really happy with this area, and I think it looks pretty. Aside from the, like, rubbish I kind of have up front. Oh my god, also really kind of bad news and annoying news. I have like a couple little boxes of alocasia corms and both of them have gone super nasty like to the point where I don't want to take them out because that looks so gross in there and like this one too I know there's mold in there. This is the first time I've ever had alocasia corms fail this badly and it's weird because I have so many in here Ugh, that's disgusting. Um, Genuinely like they're all attached together ew, but yeah, it's, it's the first time I've had so many fail So I might need to start again. I guess It's just very odd because I've had one or two fail previously and I've been able to like wash them off and 
it'd be fine, but like look at that, those little dots on there, that's all mold. I don't want to open them up because I'm pretty sure they smell really bad and then I'll have to deal with them like immediately. So I'm just going to continue leaving them here, putting them aside to deal with later, unfortunately. This whole zone is looking super duper lush still. I don't remember if I had put my big monster here last time I did an updates video, but it's living here now and I've given it a moss ball extension recently and I know it's already growing into that which is super exciting. Where is it? There we go. That root, look at it. Like it's even got little, look at the little fuzzy bits on it. So cute. So I think it is quite happy on there and growing nicely. It's next to the Monstera Dubia, which I put an extension on as well. Like the bottom bit of it is on a plank, but I wanted to put it on a moss pole for potential easier propagation down the line. And because I'm keeping the moss pole quite wet, it is going a wee bit moldy, but I'm hoping I can kind of get it to attach to the moss pole up here before that gets too moldy and gross. So then I can like chop that bit off and propagate it. And I did this because it just had like a ton of extra vine. I ended up wrapping it around the plank a couple of times just because there was so much and I didn't want it like there. I don't know, that doesn't make sense but hopefully I can get it to shingle again and be a happy camper. But otherwise, who knows? Um, again, my tie is doing absolutely nothing. It's still not doing anything. It's the slowest freaking growing Monstera I have ever had. And I mean, it's fine. It's still pretty, but it's so freaking slow. My little Monstera. Do you remember when I cut that all the way back? I don't know if I did it in uh, this channel video or a Patreon video, but I chopped it completely back and left it to start over and it is starting over super duper well. I'm probably still gonna get rid of it cause I'm kind of not in the Monstera Adansonii vibe. Something about it just isn't quite right for me. So I will probably get rid of it at some point, trade it away or something, bring it to a swap. But for now, I just wanted to like see if I could get it to regrow because I didn't want to give someone just like a stump of a plant and let it do nothing, if you know what I mean. My Cebu Blue is continuing to do fantastically. You can see it's getting so much closer to the top of the pole and like the leaves are getting properly big, which is amazing. Otherwise, I think the only other thing is that my Melaloni is flowering. It was actually open for the past two days and it's actually just closed up again today. So I'll insert a picture of what it looked like when it was open because it was absolutely freaking gorgeous. I loved it open. Like it's just such a strange thing and it's such a short amount of time that it blooms that it felt very special to be able to catch it. I'm lucky that I caught it when I got home from being away because I think it must have opened while we were away. But yeah, this stuff is doing really well very happy this whole corner and it's like very chaotic and i kind of love it though and then the last bit of the living room is my little corner with my bird of paradise and my multi plant stand business something i have learned over the past couple months is how freaking thirsty the schismatic glottis willichii is it is one of the freaking thirstiest plants in my collection. It wilts so, so easily and I water it very, very frequently. So it's quite good that it's like right next to where I sit on the couch because I can notice that it is getting thirstier. But I, I've like, it has wilted down so much and I've had to water it to bring it back up several times since I've had it. And, oh my goodness, are all of these leaves new? So I think like all of these leaves might be new on my Ficus Elastica Taniki. I will double check that and put in if I'm wrong, but they're completely facing out towards the light now, which I think means that this one is loving being here. And I'm not surprised because this does get a bit of afternoon light and I know these ones can tolerate that and actually quite like it. So that is brilliant. And of course my Bird of Paradise has not one, but two new leaves coming in very slowly. I found this one, like once you start seeing the leaf spikes, it takes a while still for them to come out. 
in my experience and where it is in my home maybe it's faster in your home but it is quite slow in mine but they will come eventually and I will get to enjoy how hopefully big and beautiful they are. Things are also doing for the most part pretty well in the office. I I do tend to neglect these plants a little bit more than ones in other rooms just because I can't just come in here freely when Joe's working in here because he's in meetings and stuff. And so I do end up getting quite a lot of leaves that need to be taken off. This alocasia one as well, though it is putting in a new leaf, so I can be very happy about that. But yeah, things just tend to go a little bit more unnoticed here, unfortunately. But I'm working on getting better at that because you can't just leave things to be ignored completely. Like, oh my goodness. I'm so over my Epipermanent Kujang. This one, I do not care about it at all. I should just take it off of the pole and put something else on the pole because I, I've literally been ignoring watering it even. So that is kind of dumb, but it's what's happening. I think this one here is my skeleton key and it's just produced this like huge leaf but it's only very barely keyed so I mean at least it's going in the right direction I think but it's kind of odd that it's not keyed more I would think when it's getting to that size that it would key a bit better my varicosums that I have that I put all on one pole I think they are doing much better now this leaf looks so healthy like look how blue it is this is one of my current favorite leaves as of this second because it's just so shiny and beautiful and perfect. I love it so much. I think I'm doing a better job about the plants in my Rudsta as well. Like, aside from my Alocasia Brancopholia Pink Passion, which I've obviously just like let go, for the most part, I think I have controlled the issues I have put things up here that I know can tolerate quite a lot of light, like my sort of jungle cacti, my lapismium here is freaking loving it. Look at all those like branches out from it, doing so well, and my fishbone, which started out as like barely anything, is also just here for it. And I actually put one of the little cacti from my swaps in here too because I figured it would like the highlight and I've actually kept this one in soil because why not? My New Guinea Ghost, I should probably check again for flat mites because it literally just like lost everything all of a sudden. And I think it might have been because it was too dry but then I hydrated it again and it just did not bounce back. So I don't know, it might have flat mites, it might not. We will, I guess, see in the future. Sorry, I'm like trying to put this cup back on. Um, the top of the moss pole, which I have been much, much better at keeping these moss poles moist. It's kind of hard to tell because of the light in here, but they are definitely staying a lot more moist, which I think is helping the plants grow. My El Choco Red is even putting out another new leaf down there, which is so, so exciting because it only just popped out this one here. I'm hoping that I can get this one to size up super well because I've heard they are super easy to size up. And also, I put my Parezo Verde um, cuttings in together and I put them in the cabinet because I know this plant likes a lot of heat and light and so I'm hoping that if I can keep the pole moist enough for it, I'll be able to get some like better variegation on it. This leaf, it came in, or it was coming in originally before I put it in the cabinet so I wouldn't expect it to necessarily have the perfect variegation yet. I don't think it has much if any, actually, but hopefully I'm able to get some variegation back because that would be quite cool. I've also been very bad about keeping my Syndapsis snake scale hydrated. Like, I just haven't hydrated the moss in so long, and I don't know. I think I'm feeling a bit discouraged by it, and it just doesn't feel like a priority to me anymore, so I've just kind of, like, I've not gone off it because I still think they're really cool, but... I just don't think it's doing as well as I want it to. It's not growing how I wanted it to. So maybe this is one that I need to move on from my collection. Oh goodness. That feels like really harsh, but it might be the answer. Oh gosh. Ah. And then I have the craziness of my shelves going on. It had gotten a lot more chaotic because I ended up taking out 
all of my like props in cups so I could acclimate my oh my goodness what do you call them um imports so I just have like areas full of mossy cups over here which I'm trying to keep nice and hydrated and I mean it's going okay I should probably be better about it but for the most part things are fine I am also really bad at keeping my Marantas happy this is my Maranta fantasy and as you can see it's got not ideal growth maybe I should trim it back to nothing and give it a go again start over with it I feel like it would probably like that at this point. A lot of my Marantas have really, really liked it. Like the one down here. I've chopped this one back so many times and every time it comes out bigger and better than before. So maybe giving it that chance might be a really good idea. So that'll be something fun for me to do. <laughs> my little purple passion plant is doing so, so well as well. It's not one of my favorites that I have, but like, Ever since I put it in pond out of the like water propping that it was in, it has been growing so so well and so happy. Which I'm actually quite pleased for. I'm surprised how well it's doing and it's not my normal go-to plant, but it's still cool. So, I'm going to I'm going to keep it for now. The best thing going on in my little corner here is that I think I was actually able to successfully pollinate my crystallinum. Gosh, this is going to be really hard to get to focus. You see those little bumps on it? They're not everywhere, but it's got like a bit of a texture to it. And I mean, well, I was pollinating this one, I think in like November, December time. So it's been here for a while. I feel like it would have died off by now if it was going to. So I'm thinking that I was able to successfully pollinate it. I guess I just have to wait and see. But the crystallinum is also putting out, I think some new growth and a new inflorescence. Like that there is a new inflorescence and then that might be some new growth. So that could be quite cool if I got another big huge leaf like that. I would love that so so much. But also if it's putting energy into creating seeds, I'm not sure if it will continue to create such big growth, which is kind of fair, I guess. Also, do you remember that like new growth on my sarcophylla that I thought might be a new leaf? I think it was actually this, which is a flower, which is kind of fun. I don't have anything to pollinate it with, but I mean, it's cool nonetheless, and my means my sarcophylla is happy, I think. It's not gone downhill yet, so I would assume that it's fine. Oh, and then my new growth on the cast iron plant, one of them, I think it's the one I was expecting, has that little bit of variegation that I was so excited about. Because you can see, like, on the other leaves, they have a tiny bit. But this one's got a tiny bit as well. The other new ones look fairly plain. Nothing too, too exciting on them. There's one at the back there as well, which might have a tiny bit, but doesn't really look like it. But I'm just glad that that one has some little variegation on it. I can't wait to show you what it looks like when it's like fully out, because that is so, so exciting. And then lastly, we have the bedroom with the lovely sleeping Cleo, who I've just woken up. Hello, baby. How is your morning going? Are you enjoying your morning nap? She's doing really, really well. She's a little bit cross that we went away for a few days the other weekend, but I think she'll get over it because she's so cute. You're gonna have to get over it, you little sweetie pie. Oh, oh big yawn, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so freaking adorable. The plants I have over the top of my bed I have one really neglected to water them, so I'm gonna need to water them probably today. But they're all doing very well. They're growing quite long at the minute, which is awesome. I love the sort of length that they're at. But it probably will mean that I need to chop and prop soon because I don't want them to get too, too much longer. I guess I can just wait until, until I feel like it because, I don't know, they kind of curl back up on themselves, which is fine. I still can't believe how crazy my string of turtles is doing. I feel like this is actually the first peperomia that I've had that's done really well and it's because I literally ignore it. 
So maybe that's the answer. Maybe I need to fully ignore my other peperomias. It's not got the biggest of leaves. It's actually got very, very small leaves. But it's also got little flowers on it. And I mean, I know they don't look that fancy, but little flowers. And I really need to do something with that because that just kind of looks like a scraggly mess. I should probably chop and prop it, but eh, feels like a lot of effort. <laughs> My little Hoya Croniana is blooming a freaking again. Look at that. It's so cute. There's one there, one there. I think those were the two that bloomed previously, but it's also got so many other like pe peduncles like there. There's a double peduncle. There's one there. Um, I swear there was one like down here somewhere. There's one in there. Like, they're just freaking everywhere. All over the place. So I think this one is just gonna be like my top bloomer of Hoyas, which I'm not mad at because they smell freaking fantastic and they look really cute too. So very, very pleased with that. And I'm glad I still have it by my desk because I can just smell it all the time. And I really enjoy that. So yeah, it is great. Up at the, my little cactus succulent corner, I think this one, <laughs> it's officially not my plant like there we go um I could like chop it and try and prop it or something but I think I'm just done with it I think I might just not be an Echeveria person sorry quick interruption I think I figured out why this Echeveria is so unhappy and I noticed it after I finished filming this video do you see that white spot on it there's a mealybug in there. Let me see if I can get a better shot for you. Sorry, my hands are a bit shaky this close, but look, that is definitely a mealybug in there. I hope, I hope, I hope this is the only one because I've never like properly had mealybugs before. I will double check all the others in my cactus and succulent corner because I would hate to have a mealy infestation. That would gross me out so much. And I'm gonna put this one straight in the bin. One of my patrons actually gave me this one, which I'm hoping that I can keep happy. I'm gonna, ignore it and never water it <laughs> hope that that works but everything else has seemed to be like very very happy in the pond I can do a bit of an update if that's something y'all want about my cacti and succulent journey in pond if that is something you want to see put a cactus emoji in the comments below and I can hopefully make that happen for you I've wanted to put this echeveria not echeveria um euphorbia into semi-hydro as well because I feel like it would quite like it and it might fit better in that pot if it was in semi-hydro so that's kind of the plan for that one so I could pot that one up while telling you about these and how they're working because I think they're working really really well so my mistletoe cactus that I normally have hanging in the window it's just lost so so much growth like every single morning I wake up and there's like more little bits on the floor and on this windowsill and i've pulled out tons that are like too dry already and i i, I mean i keep it moist enough i think i don't think it's root rot because they just they look like they're drying out almost but then also some that are falling are perfectly fine and normal so does anyone have like experience with mistletoe cactuses just like dropping loads of like leaves branches for no reason like literally all the time constantly i'm waking up to just like tons of little bits everywhere so i don't know like it does look like it has tiny bits of new growth on it like that little guy there which i won't focus on because it's too uh tiny but I, I just don't know i don't know if i'm a like even keeping this one happy or not it's cute though like i really like it and i would love to be able to keep it happy but it just doesn't seem like it is. All sort of help for this one would be appreciated because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I also haven't gone into my pond box in ages. I've been very, very bad about going in here. Um, but it looks like for the most part, things are happy, maybe? What's down there that's unhappy? Some sort of Hoya died in there fun but like otherwise things are doing pretty well just like a tiny bit of things that are a bit too wet this is a silver blush and it's doing super well it's got two growth points on it and it's just very very happy in here you can tell everything is like super duper humid i don't open this thing nearly enough 
I really should open it up more because I think it would benefit from having a little bit more airflow. But overall, I think it's pretty positive. My little Cupria doing well there. Not that exciting, but yeah, my little allocations. Freaking love this box because they just eat up the humidity. And I think it works better than the Hoyas. I don't think the Hoyas like the humidity as much. I don't know. I might just take this Hoyas out. I mean, obviously the one that's dead down there, but that one, I feel like I should just take it out. Did I show y'all last time that my ZZ Raven is putting out some new growth? Because it freaking is. Look how cute it is. It's probably not going to be huge, but that's okay. As long as it's cute and it's living, that's fine. And I'm not mad at it. I should probably give this one a water as well. Maybe a fertilized to hopefully help boost that one there. Otherwise, doing quite well. My tiny little, uh, what is it? Uh, Hoya Croniana Super Silver also has a peduncle on it right there so i'm probably gonna get a bloom from this tiny little plant which is pretty crazy like i don't understand how i've had hoyas some for like years and they don't have any sort of bloomage on them or peduncles or anything and then some like this one have one like i just don't get it but i'm not mad at it those two are fine epibrumnums i'm actually really loving how big my manjula is getting. Look at those leaves. They're huge. Like compared to down at the bottom, they have grown so, so well. This one might actually need a chop and extend or extension on this pole soon because it is very, very at the top of the pole, which is really good. It means it's happy, but I think it, they're both loving the sort of grow light here and I've put my fern leaf cactus there as well so it can get lots of bright light and happiness. Over here, oh my goodness, my Ripsalis red coral is doing so so well. Like I feel like you can't really see how well it's doing unless I pull it out. Like look at that, it's got so much growth in there and this bit is like proper trailing down and it is so freaking happy. I have grown to love this one so much. Like when I got it, I was a bit like, mm, not my favorite, but like, I guess it's fine. But now I just, I think I've just like grown to love it. Like my other jungle cacti. It's just phenomenal. It's just so freaking cool. I also still don't know if my Hoyas are alive, the Clementiorums that I got in the import. This one is just in soil and it's not really done anything at all <laughs> and doesn't look great. And then these two are in water and there's really nothing going on with the roots in there. They haven't died off, but they've <sighs> not done anything either. I know everyone keeps saying they look dead and I agree they do look dead, but they feel alive. Like, they don't feel like they're dehydrated or anything, so I really don't know. <sighs> I I just don't know what to do with them because they're not my favorite like this, and if they're not growing, I don't... I don't know. It's one of those things that I'm just unsure about within my collection, and I'm trying to try new things and expand my comfort zone, <sighs> but this is on the very, very edge of it, and since they're not doing anything, it makes me nervous. <laughs> In my little greenhouse... Uh, like, I have quite a lot in here still. I think it's mostly the same stuff as before. And I think things are doing well. I just don't know, really, if I like it yet. I still think I want to potentially weather seal it to keep the humidity in. I've not got a hygrometer in here to, like, measure the humidity, but there are those, like, gaps between all of the panes and like at the bottom it's not like connected to the base so i'm very tempted to weather strip it in hopes that i can get it to stay a bit more humid especially for the, like the sort of alocasias i've gotten here i think they would benefit from just that little bit more boost of humidity but otherwise things are doing well i've got a little new leaf on my oh, synapsis leopard there which is awesome this is the newest leaf on my purple sword, Alocasia. And otherwise, it's just, it's just fine. I am tempted also to put grow lights on this one, but I don't think I need to because I have the grow light up there. 
that goes down on it. You can see it's not that bright, but I don't know. I think it, I think it's fine in how it is. I still haven't figured out where to put the other one. It's just sitting on the floor, like <laughs> very cute. Um, need to figure out where to put that and what to put in it because I think it's an awesome little cabinet. I just I just don't know what would work well there in it and where it would work. I don't know. I don't know what to do with it. I have it, but I, and like I like it and I want it, but I don't know where to put it because I don't have that much tabletop space. <sighs> I don't know. So yeah, that is it. That is everything that's going on in my collection right now. For the most part, it's pretty good, aside from the odd mealy bug, which I haven't seen any others since I found that, so I think it will probably be okay. I will definitely be keeping an eye out on my cacti and succulent area because I do not want that they don't need to, they don't, we don't need, well, we don't need that. But other than that, I feel like things are growing very well in my collection at the minute and I'm super duper excited about it. Before I sign off, I just want to give a big welcome to Rebecca. Thank you so much for joining the Good Growing Fam. I really hope you enjoy it over there on my Patreon. If anybody else is interested in joining my Patreon, it is um, three pounds or four dollars or so a month and you get a whole bunch of bonus content like live sessions, new videos, you get to have your say in what happens on my channel sometimes so it is a really fun place to be and it makes creating this sort of content for you easier for me. Obviously no pressure, it won't stop me from making content here, it just makes my life a little bit easier. So yeah, thank you so much Rebecca for joining in and if you like this video everybody else please give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment on other houseplanty things you'd like me to talk about in the future any updates you'd like to see from here let me know and i can make sure to get them to you in my next updates video and yeah don't forget to subscribe for more thank you so so much for watching and i will see you next time bye <laughs>